Hi, I am Renmark, and welcome to our video tutorial about Java programming. In this video, we will talk about Lesson 16.1, which is the Java Math class. So let's get started. Math class in Java. The math class contains methods for performing basic numeric operations such as the elementary exponential, logarithm, square root, and trigonometric functions. Yung math class is isa sa mga pinaka-usable class na nagagamit namin to perform basic numeric operations na mahirap or kung hindi man imposibleng i-process or i-express gamit ang traditional arithmetic operations. Like for example, yung paggamit ng square root. How do we plan to get this manually? For example, yung square root of 9 which is equals to 3. Hindi ako mathematician pero as far as I know, there is no way na magawa mo to manually without a transmutation table. Ngayon sa programming, para magawa nating isolve yung ganitong klase ng problem, then one of the methods na alam ko is ang paggamit ng math class. The java.lang.math class contains various methods for performing basic numeric operations such as the logarithm, cube root, and trigonometric functions, and etc. The advantage of using the math class is that hindi mo siya kailangang import kagaya ng scanner class. By default, it is already loaded in the system so gagamitin na lang natin siya on the spot. There are five various classifications of Java math methods and these are the followings. We have basic math methods, the logarithmic math method, trigonometric math methods, hyperbolic math methods, and the angular math methods. In this lesson, we will just going to focus some of the most important and usable basic math methods. It's up to you to explore other functions available in the math class. Okay, the first method o math method na pag-uusapan natin is the absolute method. This method returns the absolute value of a double value. If the argument is not negative, the argument is returned. If the argument is negative, the negation of the argument is returned. First things first, lilinawin ko lang ito. As per our slide, from our source, sinasabi na ang return type ng method na to ay double. Ito yun. Okay, return type ito. Pero actually, same with other methods, iba-iba yung pwedeng maging return type nila depende do sa kung ano yung naging input mo. If integer yung input mo, then integer din yung magiging return type. If long, then long. And kung float yan, edi float din yung magiging return. Hindi lang siya magiging limited dun sa double. Okay? So, absolute method. So, anong trabaho ng method na to? Ang method na to is used to return the absolute value. Meaning, kung ang input mo is a positive number, ire-return lang niya yun as it is. Pero kapag nagkaroon ka ng negative value, okay, uh, gagawin niya itong positive. So, bago ko siya i-discuss ng todo, may mga nagtatanong sa akin dati, no, ng mga sudyante ko, kung para saan daw ba yung practical na gamit ng absolute. So, actually, marami siyang gamit, pero to cite a practical example, no, madalas itong ginagamit para makompute yung tinatawag nating distance. So, for example, sige, i-explain muna natin ng mabilisan. Halimbawa, kung magta-travel ka, okay, mula do sa point A, okay, point A papuntang point B, at sabihin natin na, Sa point A, it is kilometer 10 at sa point B, nakarating ka ng kilometer 25. Ang ibig sabihin, gaano kalayo yung tinravel mo? Typically, that is 25 minus 10 and that would be equal to 15. So, kung ang parameter mo is point A to point B, eh, paano naman kung pabalik yung ginawa mo? So, kung pabalik ang ginawa mo, pero ang way ng input mo pa rin is mauna pa rin ang point A which is 10, at ang point B mo, for example, um, actually it's 25. And then ang point B mo, for example, is 10. Kapag kinompute mo yan na 10 minus 25, makakakuha tayo dito ng uh, answer na negative 15. So, 
itong negative 15 na to, kaya lang naman naging negative yan kasi yung kung paano mo siya kinocompute. Kasi nauna na yung computation mo doon sa pabalik. Pero honestly, yung 15 na to is still a 15 kilometer travel. So kapag gumamit ka ng absolute, kapag ka yung sagot mo dito is positive, automatically, ire-return lang nyo to as it is. Pero kapag nagkaroon tayo ng output na negative, uh, makakancel out lang yung negative na yan at papalitan natin yan ng positive 15. So, wala naman kasing problema dahil kahit negative yung sagot natin, still, that is considered as 15 kilometer travel. So, isa lang yung uh, pag, pag measure ng distance doon sa practical usage ng uh, absolute method. So, ang syntax ng absolute method, we have ABS or ABS, and then ipapasok mo lang yung number doon sa loob ng uh, ating parenthesis. So, the A is the argument whose absolute value is to be determined. So, para ipakita natin, I have already prepared our class, which is named Math Class Demo. At uh, tulad nga na sinabi ko, automatic pwede natin gamitin ang math. So, System that out that print uh, at meron tayo for example number kunwari lang uh, meron tayong int x at yung x may laman siyang 15 kapag pinrint natin yung uh, x syempre makakakita tayo dito ng 15 okay ngayon uh, kapag gumamit tayo ng absolute okay hindi tayo dapat makakakita ng mga negative values kagaya ng negative 15 so, kung negative yan, i-convert niya dapat yan ng positive. So, how do we do that? Just have to invoke math. So, capital po yan kasi that's a class. At hindi mo siya kailangang import. Wala, siya, wala siyang import dito kasi automatically loaded yan. And then, doon sa pinakauna, nandun yung abs or absolute at ilalagay lang natin yung ating variable na x na merong lamang negative 15. So, kung ipiprint natin yan, supposed to be i-convert niya to into positive 15. That's it. Ganun lang ang gamit ng absolute. So, again, no, ang ginagawa ng absolute is uh, kinoconvert niya yung isang negative value ng positive at kung positive yan, i-return lang yan as it is. So, pakita natin. Uh, kung positive yan, dapat positive pa rin yung magiging sagot natin. Hindi ka pwedeng magkaroon ng negative na answer kapag ka ang ginagamit mo ay uh, absolute. So, mag static number na lang ako dito para mapakita natin prints 15 and then copy paste and then prints 15 pa rin. Okay, so I just have to put uh comment doon para hindi mo wala. Next method is yung tinatawag nating max method. This method returns the greater of two integer values. That is the result of the argument closer to positive infinity if the arguments have the same value. The result is that same value. So in short, no, kapag ginamit natin yung function na to, i-return lang niya yung mas malaking value between do sa dalawang number na ipinrovide mo. Typically, dati no, nung hindi pa natin alam gamitin to, manually natin ginagawa to gamit yung if. Kaso, since may available naman tayong method, which is yung max method nga, we should practice using these built-in methods kaysa do sa gagamit tayo ng sarili nating code na if then else. So, ang syntax niya is max, maglalagay ka lang ng dalawang number at ang return niya will be integer. So, again, no, hindi lang integer yung pwedeng mag return na to kundi ako nagkakamali. Uh, other data type depende do sa kung ano mga inputs. So, parameters, we have yung A, that's an integer number, and then B is another integer number. So, ituloy ko na rin para doon sa isa. We have yung min method. Uh, kabalik taran naman ng max, ang min method naman is nire-return niya yung mas maliit na value doon sa dalawang number na nilagay natin. So, kabalik taran lang siya ng max. Kung yung max, it's the larger number, the min method returns the smaller number. So, we will going to show it. So, in here, uh, we will going to put system.out.print para lang mapakita natin. And then, we will going to use math.max. And then, uh, inside the math.max, we have to put two numbers. So, ano yung mga number na pwede natin ilagay? For example, I have 7 and then 4. So, we all know that 7 is the higher number. 
sa dalawa. So, if we run this, we should expect na magkakaroon dito ng 7. Ganun lang kasimple. Okay? No more, no less. Sir, pag binaliktad mo, ganun pa rin. Walang bearing dito yung position nila. Basta't ang ginagawa lang ng max, i-compare niyo yung dalawang value. Then, kung ano yung mas malaki dito sa dalawa, then, i-return niyo yung mas malaki. Ganun lang kasimple. Kapag naman gumamit tayo ng mean function, okay? Sa mean function naman, kabaliktaran, this should return 4. Because, uh, yung mas malit sa kanilang dalawa would be, syempre, obviously, that is 4. So, uh, dali-dali naman, sir, ng function na yan. Saan ba ginagamit yan? No? Napakadami, napakadami ng application ng mean at saka max. So, uh, kahit na lang doon sa kapag nagsusort tayo, kung naalala niyo yung bubble sort, di ba, kinocompare natin kung mas malit ba yung uh, index 0 doon sa kabilang index. Pero nag-if tayo doon. Dito, walang if. Automatically, once na in-invoke mo yung method na to, alam mo na kung sino yung mas malaki doon sa dalawa. Okay? So, this is better, no? Again, 100 times kung sabihin to, palot ulit, the using, uh, using the method which is max method and min method is better than doing it by yourself. Uh, mas maganda kasing implementation plan nila kaya mas efficient yung paggamit sa kanila. Next, we have the round method. This method returns the closest integer to the argument. The result is rounded to an integer by adding one half and taking the floor of the result and casting the result to type in. So, kung familiar naman kayo sa concept ng rounding, ito yung pagko-convert natin ng decimal places. So, so kukunin natin yung decimal places and then titignan natin yung value niya. Kung yung value niya is na dun sa 5 pataas, then gagawin na natin siya o magpa-plus 1 na tayo dun sa integer niya. Kunwari, we have a value of 10.5. Yung 10.5, kapag niround off natin yan, magiging 11 siya. While yung 10.3, may iwan siya sa 10 kasi yung 3 is something na lower pa dun sa which is 5 na minimum requirement natin. Ngayon, gusto ko lang i-clarify na magkaiba yung type casting na int do sa round. Kasi sa type casting no kapag nag int uh, type casting ka, kung 10.9 yung value mo, magiging 10 pa rin yan. Wala siyang pake doon sa decimal places kahit 0.99 pa yan. Tinatanggal niya yung decimal places. While yung round naman is kino-consider niya yung value nung ating decimal places kung kailangan ba nating mag plus 1 or kung mareratin lang yung value niya. In here, we have the syntax of the round method. So, tatawagin lang natin yung round, mag-input tayo ng isang floating point number at ang maging return niya would be, syempre, an integral value. So, pakita natin. So, we have system.out.print and then, for example, tulad nga na sinabi ko sa inyo kanina kapag tinawag natin yung math class, so math.round, uh, okay? At nag-input tayo ng 10.5, at least 10.5 lang. Kapag niran natin yan, that will print 11. Okay? Ayan. So, again, ha, this prints 11 kasi nga 0.5. Kung ginawa ko itong 0.49, no, at least 0.49 lang, that's 1 point, no? Wala siyang pake. Magiging 10 yan kasi yung input natin kulang siya dun sa 0.5 kasi yun yung minimum eh. Uh, sa typecasting, iba. Kahit gaano kataas yung value mo, no, hindi niya i-consider yun. Pagkita lang natin yung typecast no, para lang ma-satisfy yung curiosity ninyo. So, sa typecasting kasi kapag nilagyan ko to ng int, uh, int dito, okay? So, pwede rin pala mag-typecast dun sa loob ng system.out.print. Definitely, no? Uh, kahit saan, ayun, no? So, 10. Kahit point nine yan. Sa round, hindi. Kung 10.9 to sa round, magiging 11 na yan. Okay? So, just to satisfy your curiosity. Pero, that is how the uh, round function or method works. Kapag 0.5 yung decimal, magpa plus 1 na siya sa integer value. Kapag ka hindi, i-retain lang niya as it is. Okay? Next, we have yung uh, tinatawag nating POW method. So, that returns the value of the first argument raised to the power of the second argument. So, familiar kayo dito, ito yung kunwari, 10 raised to the third power o yung cube. So, itong mat.pow, ito yung ginagamit natin para ma-express natin yung tinatawag na exponential operation. Di gaya kasi ng ibang language, ang Java wala siyang exponential operator. Sa ibang programming language, meron yun, yung caret. Sa Python naman, you can use double asterisk. 
So, kailangan natin gumamit ng mat.pow para magawa natin yon sa Java. Uh, natanong sa akin dati kung bakit pa daw kailangan gumamit ng mat.pow eh kung pwede naman nating i-multiply yung number by itself. Kasi ganoon naman yung konsepto ng exponential eh. Kung nakakita ka ng 2 raised to 2, that is just 2 times 2. Kung ilang best mo siyang i-multiply dun sa sarili niya para makuha yung exponential value. Tama naman yun pero hindi yun ideal at practical kapag malaki na yung exponential value. Kunwari, we have 10 raised to the 8 power. So, imagine mo, yung 10, imumultiply mo yun ng walong beses. Eh, mas madali naman kung gagamit tayo ng mat.pow. Kasi kailangan mo lang ilagay yung uh, kanyang exponent do sa pangalawang argument. Kasi ganito yung syntax niya. Tatawagin natin yung pow, ilalagay mo yung first number, eto yung base, and then yung second number, eto yung exponent. So, pakita natin. Halimbawa, ah... Uh, Kung gusto mong perform ng system that out that print halimbawa we have mat that pow okay uh, sinabi natin 10 raised to 2 this is 100 kasi 10 times 10 is 100 okay so, siya okay ngayon print natin ang advantage kasi na paggamit ng mat that pow is kung nilagay ko dito up to the 8th power then wala tayong ganong issue diyan so, hindi ko na kinompute kung ilan yan, pero medyo malaki-laki yan. Bawasan natin, kasi walong beses niyang imumultiply yung sarili niya. Gawin na lang natin by 4. Naging floating point na siya kung mapapansin ninyo, kasi sobrang dami nun. So, ang uh, 10, kapag ni-raise mo yan to the 4th power, ito yung makukuha mo. That is 10,000. Okay? You can validate gamit ang calculator. Pero, malaki naman ang tiwala ako sa Java, so hindi ko na yan i-validate. Okay? So, isa sa mga pinakamagandang uh, function or usable is also yung mat.pow and then we have the last one okay so again no medyo limited lang yung mga ipinakita ko kasi gusto ko lang makita ninyo na merong ganitong klase ng mga methods kagaya ng uh, pow square root round dun sa loob ng math class so sobrang dami na mga method na to and I'm hoping na ma-explore ninyo sila so we have the last method uh, we have the Math.square root method or SQRT. This method returns the correctly rounded positive square root of a double value. So, gaya nung sinabi ko sa inyo nung first slide, what if gusto nyo makuha yung square root ng isang value? Ang um, currently, no, pinakaalam ko lang na way para magawa natin to and also the pinakamadaling way is ang paggamit ng math.sqrt method. So, pakita natin. For example, ito lang ang alam ko eh. What is the square root of 9, no? Although meron din pala yung 16. Yun yung mga yun, madadali lang eh. So, we have math dot the sqrt. And then, kapag nilagay ko dito 9, then we are expecting the value 3. Okay? So, semicolon. Uh, run. If we run this, we get 3. So, yung 16, no? Madali lang din. Kaya alam ko yun kasi natural. Inumultiply ko lang sa isip ko, no, yung 4 times 4. Uh, pero again, no, sa ngayon kasi wala akong ibang naiisip na paraan na manually compute natin yung square root gamit yung mga built-in arithmetic operators ng Java kung hindi tayo gagamit pa ng mga method under the math class. So, para ipakita sa inyo kung gaano kadami ng function o method sa loob ng math, eto lahat yung mga listahan nila. So, sobrang dami at nag- Discuss lang ako ng napaka-konti dyan. Kasi nga, uh, depende doon sa mga kailangan ninyo. Kung i-discuss ko to ng todo, baka umabot tayo ng tatlong oras. So, pumili lang ako ng mga pinaka-importante. Actually, meron nga dito yung mat.py. Ako napansin ninyo to. Imbis na tinatype mo yung 3.1416 kapag ka kailangan mo ng pi, pwede mong gamitin yung mat.py na yan. Segue na natin no, kahit wala doon sa ating uh, slide. So, system.out.print pag tinawag natin yung mat.py at niran natin yan, i-return nito yung value ng pi which is yung 3.141159 and so on and so forth. So, at least ito, ito yung detailed talaga na value ng pi. Hindi naka-round off kasi yung tinuturo ko sa inyo is 3.1416 kapag masyado malaki yung number, no? Uh, nagkakaroon na ng bearing yung mga decimal places dito. So, this is the most accurate way para makuha talaga yung value ng pi. I hope you learned something sa lesson natin ito. And that's the end of lesson 16.1.
credits to tutorialspoint.com as the main source of the content in this tutorial. If you love this video, kindly drop a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.